Greetings adventurers and welcome to the Mike Flares podcast coming to you today from the undercraft of the Sanctum Sanctorum. My name is Martin O'Dwyer and I'll be your host for today for uh, this week's episode and joining me as always is your host Connor O'Brien. How are we doing Connor? I'm doing pretty good man. How are you today? I'm good. I, I, I From the look on your face I'm guessing you understood the reference. I did, yes. Yes. <laughs> But fear not, there's a way home here. Yes, uh, today we're going to carry on from last week's episode. So if you haven't seen last week's episode, I would highly recommend going back and watch it. Although technically you could watch them in either order, really, because we just cover half of the list in one and half a list in the other. Um, but do go back, definitely watch both. Um, today we're going to close off the last of the updates to the playable races from Monsters of the Multiverse. That's coming out. It's coming out really. What, when's that going? Is it next month, Connor? Actually, I think it's May. Yeah, I mean, I'll check the date that you you were only just saying <laughs> just stuff on this month, and I'm pretty sure that's one more thing. Yeah. Um, because I did the pre-order stuff is still up for it, I think. Uh yes, I think it, it's definitely next book. Actually, I mean, it's still oh yeah, it's a hundred percent. May seventeenth. God damn, there's a lot coming out in May. It's going to be a good month. It's going to be a good month. So we've what? You said we've that. We've Doctor Strange. Yes. Uh your birthday is coming up. Yes. Uh, help me out here. There's like two other things. Uh, my Chemical Romance are playing Ireland. Oh yes, and we're, we're going to see my Chemical Romance <laughs> and your and your stag do. <laughs> and and my stag, yeah, exactly. Oh, it's going to be uh, a fun month for the Mike Flares boys. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, busy, 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 busy. Um, but yeah, uh, I suppose we can just jump right into. It, unless there's anything, anything interesting happened that's happened this week that you want to have a chat about. D and D or otherwise. No. I don't think so. Um, oh, okay. I, I I did watch a movie last night. I watched the first Sonic movie last night. Yo, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> Mike had seen it before, but two of them was just like I saw it was on Netflix. Do you want to watch Sonic? Tara had seen it before, and I was like, <laughs> I, I, I want to watch this. Um, yeah, he's I just was, a flash. Um, he's just a flash. He's basically just a flash. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was um, I was watching um, the Arcane Lounge podcast. And they brought up the second one and that and mm. how they really liked the first one. And they, I forget the name of the guy. The guy who was running the podcast for them, like monitoring the, yeah. the sound and all kind of stuff. He um, he was saying that when they tried to book tickets, apparently the website crashed because so many people wanted tickets for Sonic 2. And I'm like, wow, geez, that, that's that's really, really popular. And then I thought, uh, I thought like, okay, well, I, I've seen... Um, or I haven't seen the first one, but I heard good things about it when it like came mm. out. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll uh, I'll see if it's on available anywhere. It was available on Netflix. Uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. Uh, it's really funny we both ended up watching it. Yeah. Um, that I was, was completely like, unplanned. Very pleasantly surprised with it actually. It was. I love. You know what? I love the ring gimmick. Where, like, I, I loved so, it at one point. He so, got hit and he dropped the bag and yes. they all clinged on the ground uh, and it made the noise from the I, game. I, I did. There were multiple points in that movie where I did just turn into like a little child going, "Oh, I made the sound from the game." <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like literally that moment where he got hit and went, because it just reminded me of one of the best tweets about Dublin that I've ever seen in my life. Um, Go it on. Was, it, I think it was like. I think it was either an American or a British person visiting Dublin. They were tweeting about something they saw, and they were like, "I love the wit. I love the wit of the Irish." I'm sitting outside a cafe in Dublin, and a guy just ran past and uh, ran past going to the bus, but he fell and dropped all his coins on the ground. And when he was like sheepishly getting back up off the ground, someone just shouted across the road, "You're right there, Sonic." <laughs> Yeah, I I thought the movie. Do you know what? It's I I think part. I could be wrong on this now. This is my perception of it. Um, I think the movie is good. It's 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 a solid movie. It's not like it's a mind blowingly fantastic. I I was going to give it exactly a seven as well. Yeah, it's a good movie. It's a good watch. It's fun. It's light hearted. Um, Jim Carrey is a delight. Jim Carrey's great. No? <laughs> He's channeling big Grinch energy all the way through that. Yeah, <laughs> it's very so much good. Up. It's so good. Um, with uh, m- multiple pounds less of makeup while doing it, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was and like I was watching it, and I thought this is really really good. It's a good movie. It's a solid seven. But I remember people thinking it was really good when it came out, and I'm like, is that just because people automatically expect video game movies to be yeah. terrible because it's, they usually are? It's a sliding scale. Like if it's for, if for a regular movie, it's a seven. For a video game adaptation, that's like a ten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, the last video game movie I think I saw was the uh, the Tomb Raider one. Um, which had some good moments uh, and stuff, but the problem with that movie is it was okay. So the the three newest Tomb Raider games 
with the one where she's on the island yeah. and then there's one where she's off the mountains and then there's the third one eclipse or no there's an eclipse in the in the imagery for the is it, it's box like art dark something isn't it it's uh rise oh it's rise up in the shadow of ah, so it's okay. dead tomb raider and then rise of the tomb raider and then shadow of the tomb raider um and i think the second two games are just so utterly forgettable and just blah but i love that first game i've replayed that first game so many times because i love her on the island in a situation where she's not the tomb raider she's not tough she's not wielding two guns you know she's <coughs> just trying to survive and she's pushed to her limits mm. and seeing her forged into what is then the laura croft we all know is really really epic so i love that first game um and this move that movie with alicia vikander is Who? based Al alicia vikander is that her name i i've never heard of this person in my life uh one second but no. that that's that's very possibly just a me thing because I, uh, I definitely two... didn't. I didn't even know there was a new Tomb Raider movie. I don't think. Uh, yeah, Ali Al Alicia or Alicia, mm. uh, uh, Vikander. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, she's dating or married to. She's married to Fassbender. Yeah. All oh, right. Um, but uh, she was good in everything, and like the movie had some solid like points in it. Uh, but it's it was based it, it was based off of that game pretty heavily, while also changing some parts of it so that. It, the themes were a little bit different and it also didn't lean as heavily on the whole survival thing and i'm like you have the bones of a really good game adapted to movie and it was just kind of the last like third i was just kind of like eh, it's, it's yeah. okay I, I i'm i'm gonna say this and obviously i'm biased but arcane is the single greatest adaptation of any video game property ever oh yes actually tech, okay yeah it's not a show. movie but it's, yeah, if you're, yeah. If you're well, just no, absolutely, yeah a video game adaptation arcane is still the benchmark I think I think the do you know what the the kind of thing about Arcane being adapted and Sonic being adapted to movie is or or to to bigger screen yeah. is that with both of them I know uh, League has a story that goes on but it's not like a character driven it's not, yeah. it's kind not of the point of, of the game yeah 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 it's a bit like Overwatch where yeah. like there's background stuff happening but really you're just there to have these fun characters playing a game with um it, it, uh, they're just like heroes, Overwatch they... very much follows the league model of it's the gameplay and then yeah. you have lore attached to the character so that maybe you get attached to the character and you want to buy like skins and stuff that'll make us money that'll be cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> they really love their skins um, but know. yeah so so like I think what may, what the reason the two of them work so well is mm. because you don't have an expectation of a certain <coughs> kind of story or a certain character like realistically if you were to make an Overwatch movie now right and you were like okay I'm going to put uh, I don't know, Soldier 76 in it, right? Uh, all you really, all that we know about his characters is a little bit about his past and that he is like kind of a gruff, yeah. grizzled old soldier and stuff like that. So like, as long as whatever, it doesn't matter what he does in terms of the, the story in that movie or that show, as long as he acts that way throughout it, we're satisfied. But if you took something then like, I, I only say it because I know... Um, uh, Oscar Isaacs is trying to kind of make it happen. Uh, if you were to do a Metal Gear Solid movie, I know mm. he's trying to get that kind of thing off the ground. Um, we have a certain expectation of what, how good Metal Gear Solid is because we've seen or we played the games and the story in the games is really solid. So anything you do would either have to be that story, which would be very difficult to adapt, or something equally as good with the same characters. Yeah. And that's very tricky because you're, you're always going to end up satisfying part of the audience because they're like oh i like that they did something different from the game that i haven't seen before and blah 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 but you're also going to get some of the audience who are like well that's not how it happened in the game so i don't like that and then you're just you're gonna you're doomed to fail really um but so again something like arcane where you can just take those heroes who have little bits of lore attached to them and little bits of story and then adapting it into one proper story that you really flesh out from from the book from the ground up you end up with a really, really solid, really fantastic show. Mm -hmm. uh, and people love it because they don't have any expectations of how certain things are going to happen based on the story of the game. They're like, let's just watch the story of this show instead. Yeah, it's the thing with games like League and Overwatch where everything, the characters are archetypes more so than actual yeah, fully exactly, characters. Yeah. So then when you do something like Arcane, you can really, really flesh them out around the three or four or five plot points or character points that they have. Um, I was actually watching brandon sanderson's podcast that he does with i think it's another guy who's an author and they were actually one and the other guy is like on episodes four to six of arcane 
and they were talking about it, and he made that same point where it's like like Jinx like he like neither of them are particularly fond of how Jinx's mental illness is per- portrayed in that show and right. like I can kind of see where they're going where they're coming from I don't agree with them um, I think it's handled quite well and in, in, in terms of like um, explaining it and justifying it and making it like feel real and not like a gimmick or a or like a oh it's so cool that she's crazy and a psychopath and all this kind of stuff um, but like I could see where they were coming from I disagree with it. but like it's yeah with stuff he was saying just with stuff like that like because they are archetypes there's so, certain stuff like that where there can be maybe some more kind of cartoony or exaggerated depictions of real things you kind of just get baked in there Do you know because you gotta have like oh you gotta have the big tough guy in crazy heavy armor because that's in like every game and you gotta have yeah, like yeah. the really fast ninja guy who can like who has a, a cool samurai sword and like you gotta have the archer and like you know there's all these archetypes you have to fill uh but we should probably actually talk about what we're going to talk about because we do actually have a lot to get through today and it's really cool uh yes it yes. is really cool. uh there's so if you guys haven't watched our previous episode uh go back and watch that uh we basically go through um pause it right now of... we'll wait oh yeah welcome back <laughs> um so we basically have um a bunch of new leaked information mm-hmm. that came out in the past couple months about the upcoming Morden Kynan's Monsters of the Multiverse um the primary focus of that book is to rewrite a lot of different monsters and 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 combined a lot of monsters that appeared in lots of different individual mm-hmm. adventure modules and bring them all into one book so you don't have to buy a 50 60 you know euro dollar book or whatever uh just to justify getting 10 or 12 yes. extra monsters at the back of it you can just buy this one book and get all those additional monsters and stuff and um, but the book also comes with uh the combined racial options for things like the elemental uh, evil uh, player's companion uh, volo's guide um and a bunch of other stuff that have uh, i think oh the i think uh, obviously wild beyond the witch light and stuff like that yeah. as well the heron Coast, and stuff like that i think a cf came from sword coast adventures guide i'm pretty sure as well no that was oh no that actually, was no, like, i think it originally uh, came from there and then it, yeah it was originally in the skag and then it was reprinted in more than kind i don't think it was in skag i feel like it was but it's not important. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. No, it yeah. Is, it, but this is this is basically it. So they're combining all of them into one book. Uh, last week we went through, the, I'd say, the first half, give or take, as well as some of the base rules are kind of changing across the board, like mm-hmm. ditching sunlight sensitivity, uh, making abilities that were previously one use per short rest mm-hmm. into your proficiency bonus times long for rest. a long rest instead yeah. which is uh, so far has been pretty beneficial and pretty pretty good to buff out certain races yeah. there are some races that i feel don't get played very often because their abilities aren't even though they might be very flavorful and stuff like that people don't play them because they're not very mechanically mm-hmm. um sound uh case in point the the air ganassi i think air ganassi are really cool drow. um uh drow as well drow because of sunlight sensitivity as cool as drow are having disadvantage in all your attacks sucks uh and your, and your are... perception checks too that that like that's one of the most common oh, checks yeah. you're going to make in a game of D D is a perception check like true uh I, I think we said it last week the only time really you could effectively play a drow uh with all the uh, as rules as written is if you're playing the out of the abyss campaign when you're underground for i'm pretty sure the entirety of that uh that that adventure i think you could probably, most of you could probably do it and call it nether deep as well well, no, you're Nether in Deep. Marquette for a chunk of Call of Duty. That's like the worst place for Israel. <laughs> it, it's smack in the middle of the de- desert where there's a sunshine all the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so and also like uh, with the Air Ganassi as well, they're just they don't have a lot of abilities. They have a, a bonus to wisdom, oh, sorry, to Dex and to Con. But mm. I mean, you could take a bunch of other different races and get similar stats. They can cast Levitate once. You know, it's it's not great, yeah. but I think they're really cool because I'm a really I, I mentioned them before. I'm never going to stop mentioning it. I'm really big fan of Avatar, uh, Last Airbender. So the idea of playing an Air Ganassi is really really cool to me, but I know that mechanically they're not great. So um, we're seeing a lot of improvements. Go back and watch our previous one, mm-hmm. and we're going to pick up uh, where we left off today. Yeah. We're going to start with the with the two Gith races, the Gith Yankee and the Gith Zarai. Uh, so for the Gith Yankee, uh, so they've removed traits, or they no longer have the decadent ma- uh, decadent mastery or martial prodigy traits. Uh, just for reference, decadent mastery was you learn one language of your choice and proficient with one skill or tool of your choice in the timeless city of 
Twin Rath gives Yankee a bountiful time to master odd bits of knowledge, and then Martial Prodigy, you're proficient with light and medium armor, and with short swords, long swords, and great swords. So you, you lose those. Now you have Astral Knowledge. When you finish a, a long rest, you gain proficiency in one skill of your choice and with one weapon slash tool of your choice. The proficiencies last until the end of your next long rest. I really like this. This is coming in a bunch of different, like there's a bunch of different both classes and subclasses and also now races that are able to do stuff like this where you take a long rest and when you wake up you have a different skill or tool proficiency and it's so cool. Yeah. I love it. I really, really I, love it. I do like this. I do have one hang up about this actually in particular. Um, and that is that. Just checking them. Do they, are they keeping, I guess they are, are they? Are they keeping their Githyanki psionics as an ability? Uh, it doesn't mention it here. No, but... yeah. No, they did. No, with yeah. Gith's or I... It's, it's right there under the astral Oh, sorry, it is. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Yeah, right there. Okay, and, but sorry, there's one thing that does, that does, I don't super love about this, and they did it with dwarves as well. They're, across the board, they're kind of taking out races that have innate proficiencies with armors. Um, yeah. And I, I don't love that simply because i would like i would like it if the ability was but like this you is, could have a this is almost the exact same though and i would argue even better rather than you're, you're rather being stuck at right you're proficient with one type of armor one type of weapon and one type of tool now every time you take a long rest you're proficient with any one weapon one armor and one tool of your choice you can't pick an armor i don't think when you finish a long rest you get proficiency in one skill of your choice and one weapon oh shit yeah no armor Damn. yeah so like that, that's that's the thing, and like dwarves, uh, uh, yeah. mountain dwarves had armor proficiency as well, like light and medium. Like, and the thing is, it is the it, thing about it is, is it it, and the thing that I really really like about having an armor proficiency innately is that you could play something like a wizard, and then you could be a really tanky wizard or like plate armor if you take this feat to get, you know, if you already have medium and you take and you take the feat to get heavy armor, you could be a full plate wielding wizard with a shield. Which is a really cool idea to me, with like twenty armor class and stuff. You'd need, but you can't... you'd need thirteen, no, fifteen strength for full blade. Uh oh, true actually. But I mean, the, the possibility is there. Is what I'm saying. Like, I always like the idea of playing like almost like an Iron Man style, uh, like fully armored, like war mage or something yeah. like that. You could do and the I was same. Kind of taking with, that um, that option out. But you could do the same with uh, human variant. Just take the heavy armor mastery feat. You would have to already have proficiency. You do. In... Yeah. 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 I, no, I, I get where you're coming from. I don't see it as a big deal personally, um, because, like, if I'm going, oh, it's not a huge deal. I just, I, I've always had an idea that like it'd be cool to take some of the classes that typically don't wear armor and then smack some plate armor and a shield on them just for an interesting build. Uh, this kind of limits that. I do like the the freedom mm. uh, of of that, although I don't know necessarily how to. I guess I guess it kind of makes sense with with uh, Githyanki and Githyanki. You could probably do a whole thing where you're like, oh, the reason I'm able to change out my skill is because as I sleep or as I meditate, I'm I'm kind of almost I'm part of like an astral network and I'm almost yeah. drawing on information. Am I that kind of makes sense. Song or do are are the Gith not all like telepathically connected to like a hive mind thing again, as well as the not a hive mind, mm. no. But I think I think a lot a lot of them do have psionic abilities. Yeah, they're they're naturally psionic, like yeah. Um, which is the next thing actually um, which is uh, get the Anki Sonics it just receives the same innate spell casting updates I've mentioned above um, which which we covered in our last video um, if I'm not mistaken I think it's like it, it makes a clarification that if you know the spell through this you can, um, you can cast it with other spell slots you might have other spell slots you might have and you can choose the um, you can choose uh, the I, I have it here, spell actually. casting modifier uh, any trait that lets you cast a spell now lets you cast a spell using any spell slots you have. Uh, you also get to decide uh, whether to use intelligence wisdom or charisma yeah. as your spell casting modifier when you do that. So yeah, because previously I think they were locked into using wisdom it, yeah, or psionics. I, I think it was that, yeah, or maybe int. Int is usually the one. So it's one psionics. of them, yeah. And uh, you'd see a similar thing with tieflings where they'd have to oh, cast. Int. Yeah, it's you'd int. see similar yeah. things with tieflings where they'd have to cast their like tiefling magic through charisma because they have like a fiendish background or whatever exactly um, yeah yeah but what's what's new and i think is really cool now is yeah you're, you're you don't get that you don't get that armor you can pick up anymore connor but you do get psychic resistance i do think it, I, I was thinking about this and i was glancing at it before uh, the 
the podcast. Fair to uh, be thank you. <laughs> yes, but, but specifically, in order to like make the flavor better, your totem isn't a bear. Your totem is an astral dreadnought. Oh yes, do to reflavor all. Oh yes, that yeah, would be re- so Reflavor sick. them all into like far realm That'd and, and astral sea creatures. There's there's a character in Lee called Udir, and he's a he's a shaman, and his whole thing is he doesn't have an ultimate. He has four senses: uh, tiger, tiger, turtle, bear, and phoenix. Um, he's getting a rework now and he's getting rechanged to a new thing and they're doing that thing where they're re it but it's like every stance is a different he takes up different stances to be it's like, it's like the animal styles in Kung Fu where he emulates the movements mm-hmm. and gets things so like Tiger makes him really fast lots of damage turtle he gets a shell and lifesteal that kind of stuff and that just so popped in my head you're like oh yeah his, and like, like of course he's like if you're a git and you're a totem warrior what are you going to look to for like just brute strength and like Un- like, I almost yeah just complete like indomitableness in uh, the astral planes the astral freaking dreadnought <laughs> like, yeah what's, oh. what's the what's the biggest meanest thing to take down in the astral yeah. sea it's a dreadnought yeah uh, then we've got a slightly shorter one for the gits are like really git yankee are, the, are like your pirates and like uh, that sail the astral sea and the gits are are your more mage type aren't they Yes, if yeah. I remember correctly, the Gith Yankee, um, yeah, it is a Gith Yankee. The Gith Yankee tend towards lawful evil. They worship their Lich Queen, uh, Valakith. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, I think they also, yeah, yeah they're the ones that are from, pirates and, and stuff yeah. like that. Tra- it says here, tra- brutal Gith Yankee are trained from war- birth as warriors. Um, uh, we're on to the Gits Eye now. Um, and just a little favor, in their fortress within Limbo, the Gits Eye hone their minds to a razor's edge. Yeah, so they are the, uh, they are the. Your spell, your, your spell castery type. So, uh, the Githyanki remove traits similar to the Githyanki. Sorry, the Githyanki. Um, I was reading Githyanki and Githyanki. So uh, they get Githyanki psionics, um, which also receive the uh, same innate spell casting updates that we mentioned with the Githyanki. Um, and similarly as well, they also gain psychic resistance. Now, looks like they didn't. Yeah, from what I can see, they didn't lose anything. So you still have um, your mental discipline, which is advantage on saving throws against charm and frightened, and uh, the gift that yeah, gets their eyes for psionics, where you get mage hand, uh, shield at third level, and detect thoughts at fifth level, um, and of course then you can choose your spellcasting uh, stat for these, whether whether it's yeah. into wizard con, con, int, int wizard charisma, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's cool. Uh, so that's that's the gits are and the gits Yankee. I, I, I'm quite I'm quite fond of what I like those changes a lot to be honest. Um, yeah, I could like there's some interesting stuff there that could make that I could see myself maybe maybe playing the gits are but or a gits Yankee and just like but trying to explain how I'm here with the party would be an interesting one. Uh, yeah, I think I I think do you know what it's one of those things where like I think you could just the less said about it the better <laughs> like people could just people don't have to have a full reaction yeah. like whoa an alien every time they meet you they could just be like hey friend I haven't seen one of your kind yeah. before and it's just it's a polite exchange and you're like I'm a gith just write down gith and we're good Hi, and I'm, then we move I'm on Tim, you know? Tim the gith yes <laughs> Tim the gith um, I, I remember uh, in Colville's stream that he had one of the guys playing one called Slim um, who was locked on a mind flayer ship inside of a a prison True. sort of a cell and then when one of the characters died they just happened to go exploring the ship and then matt was like oh you you come across what looked like holding cells and inside of one of them you see a, a, a gith I, I can't remember i think it was a gith yankee and then one of the players is like that's my character i introduce him now and then there was a whole <laughs> cool thing that's really but cool. uh yeah he got the uh, but like again no one really made a whole deal about the fact that he was this astral being like now li- working for this uh material realm or material plane um organization mm-hmm. it's just like oh you want to be hired cool yeah let's go <laughs> it's it's that uh it's that that whole thing we always overlook when a character dies and you just we need to get the player back in the game so whoever the next person is we meet they're on the team <laughs> yeah we just kind of no, yada no yada everything asked. Do you remember yeah, our yeah. first campaign where i literally went like hey we just lost a dwarf we could use the new dwarf do you want to be our dwarf <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I think he, were you were, were you in a in a boxing match? Yeah, you 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 made me bare knuckle fight him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then he was a dex character, so it didn't go well for him. Just and then the, the, shit out of him. the pit master was all like, "Drone, and you suck at fighting. You're you're fired. Get out." And he's like, "Oh, well, I need a job." And you were like, "We just lost a dwarf. We could use a new one." <laughs> despite the fact that everything I've seen from you in the past three minutes indicates to me that you're not good at fighting. <laughs> <laughs> all this blood on my right hand here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. 
But uh, yeah, the goblin. So for now, yeah, creature type has been updated. You are considered a goblinoid for any prerequisite or effect that requires you to be a goblinoid. And you now have the fey ancestry trait, um, which is, as we mentioned above, the one you're immune to magical sleep. It's the one that gives you the, the, the fey ancestry is the same stuff that the elves get, correct? Uh, yes, this is yes. the this is the same thing that they this is, uh, they introduced us a while back. Um, prior to Wild Beyond the Witchlight mm-hmm. coming out, they remember they did the UA that had all the fairy related yes. stuff, and one of them was goblins and hobgoblins, kind of a bit of a tweak and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so this is the, the what we're seeing the follow through of that. Yeah, awesome. Um, so they they gained the fair ancestry described and fury of the small. Uh, so previously. Fury of the small is that uh, when you damage a creature with an attack or spell and the creature's size is larger than yours, you can cause the attack or spell to deal extra damage. The damage equals your level and you could only use it uh, once a short, once per rest. Now, as as has become the standard, seems to be, uh, can now be used uh, proficiency bonus times per long rest, but only once per turn. Um, the extra damage now equals your PV and I, that, that I imagine is just specified for like if you have a goblin fighter you just can't run up action surge to fury, use all your uses of fury of the small in one turn uh, yeah probably so that you're not stacking like however many like it, what a fighter at like 20th level or whatever action surges and then gets uh, 8 attacks and then burns like does an additional 6 times 6 like 36 extra damage in a round yeah I was, I, I was thinking even like by level 11 as a fighter you can attack 3 times like action yeah, surge, so you, attack six times. Fury the small goes is your and level. You, and you have that's three, that's sixty six damage. Four? If, if you could do four, sorry, it's, yeah, three. But then so that's an extra thirty three damage. Yeah, Ooh, that's like more than a fireball. I can see why they were uh, called that out. Uh, we did Goliath last week. Uh, as brief summary, both of us really big fans of it. Very good tanks again. Uh, uh, they also changed the damage. I don't know if you said it. Did you say they changed the damage as well? Because the damage previously oh, dam- was damage, uh, equal to your level. Now it's equal to your proficiency bonus. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, which may again, if you, like like it, it kind of, I think we talked about this with a different skill because it works out kind of on average the same. Because mm. you could either one, one time a day you could do twenty damage, or at twentieth level you could do six times a day you could do six points of damage, which is thirty six. Yeah. Uh, but like you have to build up to that and and, and stuff, so it, it can actually works out. Better overall, I guess, actually. Yeah, I'd, I'd imagine they're trying to kind of scale it that way to re- to keep a level of parity between the two kind of styles of how we're doing it, where you get the one, you yeah. can either have one massive explosion at once or you can uh, consistently smack someone over a couple of turns. Uh, not happy with that. Um, as I said last week, Heron gone, no changes. And moving from the Goblin, we now have the Hobgoblin. Uh, where did I put my Hobgoblin thing? Oh, no. Uh, I can do a hobgoblin if you like. Uh, yeah. Do you know what? If you don't, if you don't mind, go ahead. Uh, so first off, uh, we saw similar stuff like this before. Creature type mm. is uh, has been changed, um, or rather, a clarification about it because I think you're there, or fey. In... But if there's any effect that would affect them because they are a goblin, they are considered a goblinoid for that reason. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then we have Fey Ancestry, which we talked about above mm-hmm. with, the, with the Goblin. They're removing the trait, Martial Training, which is, again, similar to the Dwarf and to the Git the Yankee. Uh, previously, that would have given them two Martial Weapons and a Light Armor uh, proficiency. But, again, we're taking that kind of stuff away. Mm-hmm. They have a new thing called Fey Gift in a, in lieu of that. And this is really uh, good. This is so really, you can, really good. You can use your Help Action uh, as a bonus action, proficiency times per long rest. Starting at third level, you can gain any one of the following benefits using this help, uh, using help in this way. One, hospitality. Uh, you and the target of your help each gain 10 PHP equal to 1d6 plus your proficiency. Uh, two is passage. You and the target of your help each get a uh, plus, bo- uh, plus 10 bonus of walking speed until the start of your next turn. Uh, or spite until the start of your next turn the first time the target of your help hits a creature with an attack the creature has disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes within the next minute um that's pretty good uh because i that i noticed a whole thing with hobgoblins kind of being the commanders and the yeah. the the captains of goblinoid armies and stuff like that um so this is a fun ability where it's like you can kind of be that commander. You can give someone temp HP. You can give someone extra movement speed. You can kind of, you're kind of bossing them around and tell them, hey, go here, do this, make this hit, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, it gives you some fun abilities like that. Yeah. Actually, this, this kind of paired actually with a... If you paired this with a battle master and took some of like the commanding strike abilities and a few other things like that... You could go like full uh, Grishnak. You could, yeah, you could just be fully like 
I'm everyone else is doing their thing, but I'm kind of like having them do extra stuff and moving them around as well. And you can totally be like the battlefield commander of uh, a squad or of, of your party. That'd be pretty cool. Um, and finally, saving face uh, has been. Oh yeah, that's right. It's been renamed slash reflavored to Fortune of the Many. Again, we saw this in the in the UA, the fairy uh, UA. Yeah. Uh, the maximum bonus you can gain is now plus three. Uh, the trait can, trait can now be used proficiency times per long rest. So just so people know what that is. Uh, again, it's been reflavored a little bit, so don't pay too close attention to the wording of this in terms of the flavor of it. Um, Hobgoblins are careful not to show weakness in front of their allies uh, for fear of losing status. Uh, if you miss with an attack roll or fail an ability check or saving throw, you can gain a bonus to the roll equal to the number of allies you can see within 30 feet of you. Uh, maximum bonus of 5. Uh, once you use this trait, you can't uh, use it again until you finish a short or long rest. So again, the maximum you can now get is plus 3. Um... And the trait, but the trait, trait can be used multiple times over mm. the course of the day instead of just the, the one time. Uh, it's a pretty cool ability as well, to be honest. Um, kind of getting that extra bonus uh, to your uh, any skill checks. Is it it's attack? It's an attack roll or ability check. Yeah, um, that could be the difference. Like, I actually now I just thought about it. We've uh, our our warlock has had some awful trouble with rolls recently. Um, where on a, I think over the past three weeks, like five times, he, there have been important roles or checks I've asked him to make, and I've told him what the thing is beforehand. I've been like, "Here's the DC I want you to beat." Yeah. You you either have, either you have one role, you have advantage, whatever. And like on five separate occasions in the past three weeks, he's rolled one below each of those things. Um, sometimes multiple times he's tried something, failed it by one, tried it again the next round, failed it by one again. Yeah. Yeah, it's been rough, but I mean, hey, if you had something like Saving Face here, perhaps you can get that little bonus uh, from having your allies nearby and uh, and overcome it. Perhaps, indeed. Um, I'll take the Kenku if you don't mind, because I, 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 like, I'm just going to I love Kenku. I think Kenku are so cool. I, I, That's fine, because I'm totally going to take Cobalt, because I love Cobalt. Yeah, it works, it works out for everybody. All right, <laughs> so, uh, the probably, like, weirdly, the one that probably has, like, the least, like, proper mechanical impact is probably the biggest one with the Kenku. The Kenku no longer have limited speech. Uh, yeah. Previously, Kenku used to own, used to be limited to mimicry, and they could only communicate, communicate through sounds they'd mimicked from other races, sort of like Bumblebee in those god-awful Transformer movies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but now they no longer have that. And, like, I both like, and, like, I, I cannot, I can see from both, I like it because... Everyone thinks they can be a really clever, good kinku that impersonates all the sounds. Some people can be. It's, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the. Do you know what? It, like, it, it's do you, it's one of those things, right? Where like you know how sometimes people have character concepts, yeah, and they introduce them. Um, I was actually watching Crit Crab uh, the other day, and he was reading some of those Reddit things about really terrible experiences at the DM table, yeah, at the at the, okay. at the D and D table. One of them was like. This guy joined the game, um, and he's like, "I'm gonna play." He asked, well, "What do people? What do we not have in the party so far?" And they're like, "Oh, we don't really have a Dexy person." He's like, "Cool, I'll play like a rogue thief. Excellent." Um, but he's like, "My character is like gonna be a little bit cowardly, so he won't be the guy running into the fight. Um, he'll, he'll want to avoid confrontation if he can." And in the fight, uh, in the very first fight they got into with some goblins, he ran away. Uh, he, I was tight. He he hung back, and the two fighters rushed in, and they fought all the goblins. And he like just pointed back down the dark corridor they just came from, and went, "Oh no, it's an ambush! There's more coming! Don't worry, I'll stop them." And he like ran into the darkness, like just far enough away that he knew that they wouldn't be able to see him. And then he was just like started banging his dagger against the the stone wall and making all these noises like he was fighting, and. I was like, he, he it, was a, it was a whole thing that like uh, some people at the table thought that was kind of funny. Some people were like, you didn't contribute at all there. Mm -hmm. And then it, it it ended up going really bad when the DM, um, the the one player took it really bad. One of the fighters was like, you're not getting any of the loot because you didn't do any of the work. Uh, and he was no, he was just not having it. And then that that fighter pays the dungeon master ten dollars to make an attack that he tried to attack the rogue. He missed. And then he paid the dungeon master ten dollars to make that a critical hit instead. 
Um, it, it, everyone in this story is a bad guy. There I, are no heroes here. I was no. so on the guy who was the fighter side for like ninety percent of that. I was, yeah, I was it, so with him. I was like, I would have decked that guy across the table. <laughs> there are, there are no heroes in this story uh, because he should not have, uh, he should not have not contributed in any way. He could have hung back and thrown daggers or something, but like. Whatever about wanting to play a coward, but then if you're not contributing to the team, you know, it's not fun. The fighter, like, had probably shouldn't have, like, escalated to, like, a PvP thing either, or tried to bribe Dungeon Master, and the Dungeon Master lost all integrity when he decided to accept the bribe openly and let, a, and let that happen. No one's the hero here. My point I'm trying to make um, is that the idea of, oh, I'm going to play a coward is maybe funny once, mm. and then after that, like if he if he had, like I could I could have let that slide one time at a table I would have been okay yeah if, but if every encounter that comes up he's like running away and like oh I think I see something over here and he hides behind a rock I'm like look you're not playing because you're not contributing that sucks and I think the same thing goes for someone who's like I'm gonna play a Kenku character that's entertaining for like a session mm -hmm. and then when you're five or six or ten or twenty sessions in and the player is struggling to try and like creatively communicate an idea to you with different sounds. He's like, at first I make a sound like this, then I make a sound like that, then I make a sound like you. Yeah, you're just gonna just tell me, just tell me out of character what's happening, please. You know, you don't want to be. It, it's a hindrance. Yeah, which is uh, the, yeah, like you've basically covered what I was gonna say. Where I can see from two perspectives, or sometimes it can be really cool and people can be really creative and fun with it. But also, it's really goddamn annoying because you you're not able to talk which is how you organize everything in dungeons and dragons yeah. um but yeah no so they no longer have limited speech <laughs> after all I, I would i would a real spiel there sorry you did yeah but it was good so i didn't want to stop you uh your size <laughs> your size like a lot of um the newer ra uh, races or the updates to the races that are coming through now you could choose whether to be medium or small so if you want to be like an eagle kenku or if you want to be a robin kenku you can <laughs> That's actually really uh, a really interesting, or, or actually something I always forget when I look at Kenku in the book. They're the picture big. of them. Yeah, <laughs> I, always, I always think, oh, that Kenku's look. He looks like he's scaled, yeah. like he's about the size of a gnome or a halfling or something. He's no, like, five, like five, five feet tall. tall. <laughs> they're as big as dwarves and only a little yeah. bit short, shorter than humans, and they're quite broad. Yeah, they're big like, creatures. Like imagine how scary like a five foot tall bird with like and like and like, and, like uh, what's the goddamn word? Uh, proportionate beak. Like, imagine how yeah. big his... That, that thing will tear your eyeballs out. A, a halfling-sized crow person with a beak that's, like, six inches long is like, oh, that's cute. A beak that's, like, a foot and a half long <laughs> that can take your eyes out is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they can be medium or small. Um, their previous trait, Expert Forgery, has been renamed to Expert Duplication. And you now have advantage when making an exact duplicate of writing slash craft work made by yourself or someone else. Um, instead of oh, just... Was that previously? Was that just... Proficiency in uh, forgery kit. Pr uh, let me see here. So expert forgery is you could just do it to other people's ones. So like like you could you could perfectly duplicate someone else's work, but you couldn't duplicate your own. Oh okay okay. Which is weird and uh, that's. It. I think that has to do with their lore because they have a whole lore thing where they're like their creativity was stripped they're, away by a god that they double crossed or something I, it like was that. The they they failed the Raven Queen in in some great time of need and that's why they were like cur that's why they have the cursed speech and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So an expert duplicate. So yeah, you've know you know have advantage on making the making an exact duplicate of writing craft made by yourself or someone else instead instead of just someone else as we covered. And it no longer states that you can that you make that you can make forgeries just exact duplicates, which is good because forgery kind of Im implies is kind of lesser craft, I guess. Um, yeah, a forgery kind of implies that someone might be able to see it's falsified and not yes. accepted or something like that so previously you would have had kenku training uh, which would give you proficiency in the choice of two skills between acrobatics deception stealth and sleight of hand uh, and that has as it's stated here has been upgraded into kenku recall uh, you now gain any two skills of your choice additionally you can give yourself advantage on the skill check you have proficient have uh, additionally you can give yourself advantage on the skill check you have proficiency in proficiency bonus times per long rest so like if you're a rogue, a kangaroo rogue, you proficiency in stealth, you can give yourself right. advantage on stealth, which is really good, actually. Uh, honestly, just having that's that's fantastic. From like, that's a, that's great if you want to be like, uh, you could be like, I don't know, the fact is it that just it's, skills? it's just skills, it's, the fact that's, that it's open to anything really, really like broadens the kangaroo rather than just what it used to have, which was 
acrobatics, deception, stealth, and sleight of hand, you go, oh, I'm a rogue. But even the fact that, like, it's like you're just having multiple times for a long rest, you can just give yourself advantage on for no reason other than the fact that you want to. You can be like, oh, I want to deceive this person. I'm going to give it's an important check. I'm going to give myself advantage. Um, and that's just baked into not even your class. Yeah. Like, that's just baked into you as a, as a, as a race. It's fantastic. That's it, a really, really good skill. It's also not limited to um, the skills that you get from this feature, it's any skills you have proficiency in yes yeah which, which if you're like a rogue or something like that and you do because rogues have the most uh proficiency and everything rogues and barons. yeah and you might also have like uh expertise in some stuff so you're getting advantage on an expertise role is just insane crazy um and then the last thing the kinku have is mimicry uh in inside checks on your invitations are now against a dc eight plus proficiency plus your charisma modifier instead of a contested deception check which i think is good like that's what it should be really yeah, that, I mean that kind of makes more sense. Um, yeah, because I mean the, the the contested check is fine, but I mean I guess this kind of gives you a little bit more of an advantage maybe, because uh, that would mean that you you're setting a DC, so you're guaranteed eight plus proficiency. So even at like fifth level, that's eleven plus charisma might be. We'll say it's like two or three. Well, so you're looking at like thirteen, fourteen, three. Yeah, yeah, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. So like, but like that can that will one that will scale up with you as you go, but mm -hmm. you're guaranteed to hit that nice middle range. Like, there's no fear of you rolling a one, two, or three. Yeah. Uh, but there is for the other person. So this gives you slightly more advantage in that you might end up, uh, they might end up rolling poorly, but you're guaranteed to hit that nice middle number. A uh, bit more chance that you will succeed against them. I would love to do like, imagine like a Kenku rogue bard that just specializes in really messing with people's heads. And what you do is you sneak in, you sneak into the room and you like you choose size small. You sneak into the into a room and you eat it. You sit down with like a uh, you sit down with like a bunch of like stuffed animals or something, and just when someone's asleep, you just start mimicking ghost sounds in their room. <laughs> you just keep doing it. You just keep doing it all night and just absolutely break them mentally. It would be so much fun. I do. Uh, I I've always liked Kenku as a as a monster and as a as a race i used them in my first uh campaign they were meant to be like because i thought they were kind of cool so i thought like oh i had this i had this guy named Brazarno who was mm. uh, a drow and he was like a spy and information broker kind of guy and all of his spies were kenku that he had hired and they were spies because they could perfectly hear something and perfectly replicate what they've heard back to him so at, in the right voice and everything so it's like that's the perfect way of gathering information you're basically recording people and then mm. just reporting back in they're, um, they're mics with wings exactly yeah um so I, i've always thought they were pretty cool so I, I like that they're getting a little bit of a buff here and that they're more generalized as well mm -hmm. um i mean they, they even the the export duplication thing is kind of specific mm -hmm. to their lore and stuff but that's fine i'm okay with that i do feel like there's maybe part you you could make an argument that uh some of the changes that we're seeing in here do take away from the lore that is built up about certain races uh but i also think that that's kind of beneficial because there's nothing stopping you let's say there's certain things that are taken away from certain races where we're not going to say that they're really martially oriented now but we're making them kind of more open so that if you want to choose the martial path you totally can mm -hmm. but you can also choose other paths for them as well uh, and it gives them a bit of flexibility yeah um, exactly. and just keeping that expert uh, duplication thing in there is really keeping a, a little a little snippet of their lore alive in the mechanics of the of the race yeah exactly yeah, and like I, I like it. I think I like it because they've gotten rid of, like, they're very much still impacted by their lore because they've got the whole like they're they're they're, they're like the kind of magpie kind of a kind of thing going on where they're like picking things up and they've got the forgery stuff and like it doesn't. Part of the lore is that they're flightless as well. Yeah, so exactly. That, that sticks around. They're flightless and they do still mimic. It's just they're not. They it's they just can't only mimic. You know. So like. Yeah. If you want, you can still totally do it. Like I, I think it's just, I literally think like I think this is just where like lore and flavor just kind of have to give way a little. It's a little. It's a compromise between lore and flavor and like good gameplay. Yeah. Where you, and this they're, is they're good gameplay be... because as much as I like, like the, the problem with it is, and it, you know, it optimizes the game for everyone mm -hmm. because again, if you want to play that type of Kenku that is very you totally spy, can yeah kind of spy thief kind of rogue oriented you totally can all the all the mechanics are still there but it just means that if you want to play a kenku barbarian or a kenku wizard or whatever you totally can as well 
Sorry, just the I just division. Oh god, have, have you have you, you've never played Bloodborne, right? Uh no, I've seen I've seen loads of footage have, and stuff. Have you have seen the crows in Bloodborne? <laughs> uh, I think so. They like they're they're one of the best ever designed like mob enemies that I've ever seen in a game because you just Can don't ask... see them. Yeah. Can I ask? Um, yeah, did you were you like prompted for this because I said Ken Kuhar Barbarian? Yes. I feel like. If, I feel like every now and again I come up with a character concept, and if it's if it's blank barbarian <laughs> for anything, you go ooh because no, you love barbarians. I do, I do love barbarians. I do love barbarians and paladins are easily my favorite classes. Oh, and monk is third. Um, but like the uh, no, just you said Kenku barbarian. I just had this vision of like this hench crow just hopping a foot off the ground and just going <laughs> into my face, and that's literally what the crows in Bloodborne do. They look like oil slicks on the ground. They don't really move, and you can't really see them. But then you like roll through a bunch of boxes to try and find the secret door, and suddenly there's four crows behind the boxes, and they all just jump up into the air, and they like stun lock peck you for two seconds. But then another one comes along and does the same, and it's just horrifying. It's like the first you like. It's a joy to see the first time anyone ever experiences the, the crows in Bloodborne because it's hilarious. But yes, that's why I thought of the Kenku Barbarian because it's strong enough that it can just climb up you and hold on to your shoulders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Do you want to take your little lizard boys away? Uh, my little lizard doggy boys. Um, in older editions, they looked a lot more like dogs than yeah. lizards uh, and they've kind of gotten more lizard, which I like. Um, they, they super strong remind me of like an evil Mushu now. Uh, yeah, a little bit, even just the way they look, yeah. Um, so, kobolds, I love kobolds. I think kobolds are really, really cool. Um, because they're resourceful. Um, so, kobolds are, they're, they're removing two traits, which we kind of knew about already. Sunlight mm. sensitivity, boom, gone. So, immediately, kobolds are 20 times better. Um, we have, I, I was going to play a kobold artificer for a long time, and like, the only way I was going to make the build viable is because I was going to use, I was going to create one magic item as part of my infusion. And instead of goggles of night, I was giving myself goggles of day that just make me able to walk. They're basically sunglasses. Yeah. And that let me walk around without having disadvantage. And I was okay with that, but now I don't need that, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're taking rid of, get rid of sunlight sensitivity. They're also losing pack tactics, but mm. pack tactics is a great ability, but they kind of only got that because they had sunlight sensitivity and that sucked a lot. You know, you need something really good to balance out something really bad. Yeah. Um, so instead, uh, we've, we've a couple of things. We, we still have um, the grovel, cower and beg ability, but it's being reworked into what's called for chronic cry. Um, so just so you know what that can do previously, as an action on your turn, you can cower pathetically to, to uh, distract nearby enemies. I love until the end. Sorry? I love goblins. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, until the end of your next turn, your allies gain advantage on attack rolls against enemies within 10 feet of you that can see you until uh, well, you can use the trait once uh, and then you can't use it again to finish a short or long rest. Um, it's, a, it's a weird one because I feel like like I don't know, it depends on the character you're playing. But if for a, if your character is like a kobold barbarian or kobold fighter, and they're meant to be kind of tough, and all of a sudden they just it, are they doing the thing? There's this thing they do in community. The the oldest character somebody Pierce does. Somebody call an ambulance for you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but they they're doing the thing that Pierce would do a thing in community the whole time, where if if he got in a situation where he was in trouble or someone was about to like get angry with him, he just go. <laughs> And he pretend to have a heart attack, but he do it like multiple times a day. <laughs> and and I'm like, how many times can, can the cow, can the gravel cower or and beg ability work in the same combat where you just go, ah, I'm so injured and vulnerable, and then everyone looks at you, and then your your allies get a chance to, uh, to get advantage or whatever. It's just, it's a really weird ability to me. Um, so instead now the trait can be used uh, a bonus uh, as a bonus action. So it was previously an action. Mm. Awesome. Uh, proficiency bonus times per long rest. Nice. Uh, it now affects enemies that can hear you. Uh, can hear you within ten feet. So I think. Oh yeah. Previously, it was enemies that can that were in ten feet that can see you. Yeah. Um, which I guess is kind of makes sense because what if like one of the enemies is facing away from you? There could be a whole idea there. Yeah. They can see you technically, but are they looking at you? So I think the hear you thing makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, instead of those that can, instead of those can see you, uh, blah, 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 uh, the advantage, oh, oh actually, yeah, also it mentions here because it's technically a cry that you, that you let out instead of um, them seeing you cowering. Um, the advantage on attack rolls against them is now granted to you as well. Really good. Uh, lastly, the effect lasts until the start of your next turn. 
uh, instead of the end of your next turn. Slightly. Uh, yes, but I get why, because would we'll say until the end of your next turn would... Although it didn't affect they're, you. Did they're, it? They're, yeah, that's the thing. They're moving power from its length into what it affects. So, like, rather than yeah. rather than it lasting to the end of your next turn, it now lasts to the, end of the, to the start of your next turn. But because there's only lasting to the start of your next turn now, you also get the advantage. You can kind of... Yeah, because you could just you could just do this as a bonus action at the start of your turn yeah. and then go in and make an attack. The Is it the next attack roll you have? Uh, actually, no, it's all attack rolls. Yep. Yeah. Gain advantage on attack rolls, yeah. So on those enemies, so yeah, you could just do it as a bonus action at the start of your turn and get it there. So yeah, you don't really need to wait until the or to have that extension until the end of your next turn. Then you can just do it in the same in the same round. Yeah. Um, we have Cobol Legacy, which is new. When you choose this race, you gain one of the following options. Uh, I, I'm liking this structure. They did this a while ago as well on the on the Hobgoblin. Yes. I like that. Um, so when you choose the race you gain one of the following options craftiness you gain a proficiency in one of the following arcana investigation medicine sleight of hand or survival two is defiance you advantage on saving throws against frightened condition and uh, three is draconic sorcery you learn one cantrip from the sorcerer spell list uh, and you choose uh, intelligence wisdom or charisma blah blah for your for your modifier that's cool I like that that actually it still gives you like what what the first one there makes you more skillful yeah so i guess that's kind of like saying hey you're going to be like almost that that's that's your kind of if, if the if the triangle of like skills in D D is like martial magical and skill mm. and the, the top one craftiness is like your skill based one yeah. the defiance one would be really good for fighters and barbs and paladins yeah. and then the draconic sorcery one it obviously adds to your uh your magic ability so that's kind of you can really go in any of the three directions a character could go with it'd any be, of that it'd be really fun to build a kobold way of the drag way of the ascendant dragon monk and then take the draconic sorcery thing and use your wisdom as your spell casting for it yeah you could just pick up like uh produce flame or firebolt or something like that and be like blasting long range fire as well as punching fire at people. it would be pretty sick it would be pretty fun oh i love the idea of like a a like a three or four foot high lizard just hopping around the place like like roundhouse <laughs> kicking people in the face and blasting them with fire you're literally moving you're quite literally yeah, yeah. at that point um, uh, I, I love kobolds so oh, so much so and fun. like i'm oh, yeah i'm gonna have to play kobold at some point because they, they yeah. they've just gone from being pretty fun to immensely fun they, now they, i find like the reptilian races are really fun they put like a lot of quirky fun stuff in the reptilians and i like it, it it's a shame people don't pick them more often i know um People, I, people are always picking elves and dwarves and humans and stuff. Let's get off here, guys. I'm, Come on. I'm so guilty of this as well because, like, I absolutely would love to play a lizard folk, but I'm like, I'm picking like elves and humans and like, yeah, the most basic bitch D and D races. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, all, it's either, you want to be the human, <coughs> one, see, you you either want to be the human characters because I guess I guess they're the most relatable. Or do you want to be the the superhuman characters like mm. Asimar and Tieflings and stuff who are like human plus? Yeah. But you never you never want to be the the little shitty lizard person <laughs> in the group or anything like that. Yeah. Mike, Mike revels in it. Mike oh, always Mike wants to play. It. He played a dragonborn first, then he played a, a turtle, yeah. and he's playing a tabaxi in your game. Mike, I, oh, and he played a kenku in a one shot. He did, yeah. Mike always wants to be the weirdest, most like uh, anthropomorphized animal race he can possibly be. This is the weirdest, most out there one there. Uh, speaking of weird and out there, we have the lizard folk. Um, so they no longer have the cunning artisan trait, uh, which is as part of a short re- a short rest, you can harvest bone and hide from a slain beast, constructs, dragon, monstrosity, or plant creature of size small or larger. to get one of the following items, a shield, a club, a javelin, or one, 1d4 darts or blowgun needles. To use this trait, you need a blade, such as a dagger or appropriate artisan's tool, such as leather worker's tools. Again, like, I think that's cool. It's a cool concept. I like it. It's a cool concept. But at the same time, I'm like, when would you really use this? Because we we're, look, we're DMs. We know, right? By the time there's an actual character adventuring, they're going to have their own gear that they have specific attachments to and things like that. And they're just like, I just don't think it's like, I think it's a cool, I think it's cool in concept when it comes to the reality of playing. It's not really that effective or good. I mean, I, 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 bar yeah, like okay. what levels maybe like one to three yeah that's the thing that's the thing it's it's not going to be super useful um it's not going to be super super useful overall mm-hmm. i think in early in early levels you could totally spam this mm-hmm. and be like i don't have a lot of money 
I'm going to just make a bunch of shields or something like that and sell them on. I it, It's a nice ability. It's flavorful. It's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's definitely not something that is going to come up very often. And it will just phase out of being important after, yeah. again, level 3, 4, 5. You're not going to be using it really much. No, yeah, exactly. Because even if you had, like, killed, like, a dragon, you're like, oh, I'm going to use my cunning arts and to make it, like, a long sword and a shield out of its scales and bones. is like, cool. So you've just made kind of crappy weapons out of this thing when you could have just harvested it, taken it back to someone who can actually like forge and made you yourself a really cool weapon with a bit of time when, when you can instead use the rules in in Danathar's guide yeah. and actually spend a, a few weeks crafting a sword from a dragon's tooth instead you know that's way better than anything you can do here to make any these little 15 little minutes of spitting some bubble gum and let's go <laughs> yeah yeah uh but yeah so you've lost that um their speed uh, their swimming speed is now equal to their walking speed, which I don't get this change because their walk speed was thirty, their swim speed was set to thirty. But I guess this is to mean that like if you are playing, if you were playing like a lizard folk and you'd like haste cast on you, then you would get sixty feet of walk and swim speed. Well, haste would increase all of your speeds, it doubles yeah. all your speeds. So but if if you would do something like a monk, monks want to get bonuses yes. to their so... movement speed, their, their their regular movement speed. But because the two are equal now, it means if you're a monk, you also get faster swimming speed as a lizard folk as well. Yeah, uh, and, and likewise with like barbarian and, and, yeah. and stuff like that. Oh, okay, cool. Sorry, got you now. Um, and the bite has also been changed. Uh, previously, the bite would have been uh, your fang maw is a natural weapon, which you can use to make unarmed strikes. If you hit with it, you deal piercing damage equal to one d six plus your strength modifier, uh, instead of bludgeoning normal for an unarmed strike. So it was literally just a piercing unarmed strike. Um, now it deals slashing damage. It's considered an unarmed attack instead of a natural weapon as well. Um, and then they have the trait Hunter's Lore, which has been reworked into Nature's Intuition. Uh, previously, Hunter's Lore gave you proficiency with two skills from the following list, Animal Handling, Nature, Perception, Stealth, and Survival. Now, uh, Nature's Intuition, um, this, feat is, this feature is actually also shared with a turtle. Uh, you gain two of the following skill proficiencies, Animal Handling, Nature, Medicine, which is new for the Lizard Folk, Perception, Stealth, or Survival. So you're getting an extra feat in there. No, not feat, extra skill, Jesus, Mary. Um, an extra skill you yep. can choose. Uh, and then we have Hungry Jaws. Uh, so previously, Hungry Jaws. In battle, you can throw... Not to be confused with Hungry Eyes. Oh. I, Sorry. I hate you. Because <laughs> <laughs> now all I see is that McDonald's ad in my head. Oh, right. Hungry Jaws. In battle, you can throw yourself into a vicious feeding frenzy. As a bonus action, you can make a special attack with your bite. If it hits, it deals its normal damage and you gain temporary hit points, a minimum of one, equal to your con mod, and you can't use this trade again until you finish a long or short rest now what was that previously oh that that's the previous oh yeah sorry that, that's that's what it was yeah. yeah now the trade can be used proficiency bonus times per long rest and the temp hp is now equal to your proficiency bonus instead of your constitution modifier which is really good because if you're playing something that doesn't build con now it's a lot more useful um and if you are playing something that still does build con this is still useful it's going to scale up naturally with you anyway exactly they, they, they also keep their natural armor ability which i love because mm. it's a great ability yes 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 yeah, it's, it's all it's always 13 plus dex oh beautiful yeah no and armor required left. they are and they also have uh hold breath which is really good as well so you can they, they 15 can hold minutes. 15, 15 minutes of holding your breath which is really good yeah. um yeah and yeah that's pretty much it for the lizard folk then uh, uh i'll do minotaur if you want yeah go ahead sure i won't be uh, bullish so, over it uh <laughs> Uh, so Minotaur, they are removing the trade imposing presence, which previously gave you uh, proficiency in either intimidation or persuasion. Um, their horns are now considered unarmed attack instead of natural weapon, which again we we've talked about this last mm -hmm. week. Uh, that's the same for any of the races that have claw, bite, or horn attacks. They're all called for the, for the um, yeah, they're all called unarmed strikes now, mm -hmm. uh, unarmed attacks, I should say. Um, and then the labyrinth. Uh, Labyrinthine Recall is a new ability that they have. Uh, so to keep their goring rush, to keep their speed uh, and their horns as a weapon and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so now the new ability, Labyrinthine Recall, you always know which way is north and your advantage on survival checks when navigating or tracking. Uh, it's just, that's just an extra note. Yeah, that's an extra note here from the person who wrote the, the UA. That said, they say it's pretty sure this is something similar to an older ua version or something like that i'm not i, I do not have the the information to back that up I, uh, that's I, cool though because i mean there's a whole thing with minotaurs and, and, uh, and labyrinth yeah but i mean if you were to say that they can always navigate mazes which i think the monster stat block in the book does have something yeah. like that 
but that's a really difficult thing to translate into a player character because I mean how often are you walking through mazes um, but this is fun because they, they always know which way is north thing is something from the the keen mind ability yep. and then having advantage on survival checks when navigating or tracking is awesome you could build, you could build a really really uh, good uh, yeah. ranger minotaur if I was ever playing a, a minotaur character I would carry around the ball of string like a, a ball of string a ball because that that's how that's how they got out of the, the that's how they got out of labyrinth oh it's just leaving it behind you as you yeah that, and, and you can navigate your way back i think it was it was a part yeah it's perseus in the minotaur um that's how perseus got through the labyrinth he used a, a ball of twine i think it was like a guy i think it was like a magic ball of twine um uh, but he basically let it out as he went and was able to follow it back i'm just i sorry i had this idea in my head it's, it's a simpsons-esque like scenario i just imagine but like if I was going to a maze, I'd bring a ball of string, and you think they're gonna like leave it to like find their way back or something like that, and instead they just go, "Hey, look, Minotaur, string!" and he chases the string. Or again, <laughs> oh, just a very Irish reference again. Do you remember when they get lost in the caves and Father Ted and Father Dougal realizes that he's got his jumper on a rock on the boy near the entrance, and now it's hey, a tank top. My jumper's turned into some sort of women's bra. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, and then, and then Ted's like, "This is great. We can use this to find our way out." And he starts and he reeling the it. string in, and the Dougal's like, "Ted, shouldn't we be following?" in the string instead of reeling it in so that we can follow it to the end and not just put all the like and he's like and then just gets to the end of it and he's like oh uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh the, what uh, a show man what a the, show the, the Simpsons thing I, I thought about there with the ball of the string was like you know they I forget what it is it's one of the really old episodes where Homer is trying to navigate a way out of the power plant because uh, he wants to leave work early and that's he goes the one down with the spider a... like that's the one with yeah, 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 yeah. And it, and he's like the pass. It's some sort of rhyme he recites. It's like Something to pass like, the spider's lair, you must oh, recite no, a verse of the Bible. I know. Um, if you if you the, if you wish to pass the spider's curse, simply recite a Bible verse. Yes, and then he's like, "Thou shalt nah, to hell with it." And he grabs a stone <laughs> and throws it out of space, <laughs> and it dies. <laughs> oh, oh, so my god! Oh, sorry. We're just we're just going full referencing today. Um, right. So <sighs> the orc. Uh, oh, I love orcs, man. I, I like. Sorry, I just gotta like, put that out there. Yeah, no, it's all good, man. We know what size you're on in the War of the Ring. Um, but orcs, yeah, <laughs> remove trait. They no longer have primal intuition, uh, which was uh, proficiency. It's again one of those ones like you have proficiency in a list of the uh, this specific list. You take two skills from this specific list of skills, and for yeah, orcs. The, the, will... prob the problem with them is that they're so narrow in scope. Yeah, animal handling, insight, intimidation, medicine, nature, perception, survival. And no one uses animal handling. Let's be honest. Like, let, let's just yeah. let's just be honest. I have people. animal handling, and I don't use it. <laughs> yeah um so they don't have that anymore uh they're the trait that they have called a gr aggressive which previously was as a bonus action you can move your up to your speed towards enemy of your choice that you can see or hear and you have to end the move closer to the enemy than you start so you can't go up and move back um that has now been reworked into what's called adrenaline rush it lets you use the dash action as a bonus action proficiency bo proficiency bonus times per long rest and when you use the dash action in this way you gain temporary hp equal to your proficiency bonus i love that that's like just like that's awesome. i'm going in like let's go yeah, yeah like all, all guns blazing if you were like an orc fighter or something like that Shocking bonus action all. and you are just absolutely in there you've extra health yeah. just yeah so good bonus action aggressive action surge let's go yeah. yeah exactly yeah <laughs> uh, and then now they have relentless endurance which is the uh, the relentless endurance trait shared by the half orc where when... it made no sense yes it made no sense that half orcs had that and <laughs> full blood orcs did not so thank you some, awesome some kind of weird fantasy eugenics boy by, by only mixing the blood of the like the orc with other races yeah, does it bring out exactly. their full like what the hell like Actually, I think that's the opposite of eugenics. Cause it wasn't eugenics. No, we'll not get into that, actually. I, I, I don't know enough about it to get into it. So It's it's not good things. <laughs> okay, okay, right. good, good to know. Uh, not good to know. I can't yeah. remember. The, uh, the Seder, uh, moving quickly away from eugenics. Uh, Ram, so uh, like we were talking earlier... I don't think I never thought we'd have to say on this point. I know, yeah, the Seder, <laughs> moving away from eugenics. Um, so the Ram, uh, damage is increased to 1d6 plus strength modifier, and uh, similar to all of the other natural weapons now considered... They're gone from d4 to d6. d4 yeah. to d6 now considered an unarmed attack. Um, and they have magic resistance as well, sort of like the gnomes did, and like we said last week with the changes to the gnomes and the gnome offshoots. Um, the trade only now grants advantage on saving throws versus spells rather than spells and magical effects. 
a little bit of debuff, but I mean, still a really good ability. Like the sailor like, is still really, really good. Like you thirty five, you thirty five base walk speed. Your fey, the ram is. You still have the ram. You have magic resistance. Uh, you still have your mirthful leap, which is um, you can roll a d eight and add the roll number to the number of feet you cover when you make a jump. Um, even a standing jump, which is class. Um, and you still have reveler, so you're still getting performance and persuasion, and you proficiency with one musical um instrument of your choice. So you still have all the really good things they just have kind of again like a lot of these are just really nice quality of life buffs is how i describe them really yeah true uh can i do cl yeah by all means cool so again uh, similar to the hobgoblin the other elves and stuff uh clarifies that you are considered an elf when you prerequisites that or, or effects that require you to be an elf uh you have your fey ancestry receives the changes mentioned uh previously again, about how that works probably the most impactful change to that being that they specify you are aware um when you're when you're when you're doing your fate run so technically speaking one character could take an entire shift swat like a whole night's watch yeah yeah because you can just be like semi-active for four hours and then like while you're doing watch and stuff yeah. like that and then basically inactive but still keeping watch when when you're doing your trance um they they have removed the traits or the abilities cf training and the extra language feature mm -hmm. um Let's see. Well, I think the extra language dropping thing is kind of across the board anyway. Yeah. But um, the CF training previously gave you a proficiency in spear, trident, light crossbow, uh, and net, mm -hmm. uh, which I don't think I've ever seen anyone wield a net, although they're, they're cool, but I've never seen anyone actually use them. Uh, I th um, I'm probably going to get the class of them wrong here. But I think I think it was the Myrmidons in ancient Greece were the guys who used the, they had the trident and the weighted net, and they're the guys who wore the big metal helmet with nothing else. Yeah, I think it's one that's kind of swoops up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they um, might have worn more. I, I'm pretty sure they probably did wear, wear more armor, but in my head, it's like the movie version of that guy. From Gladiator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so their speed um, in their Child of the Sea thing, uh, their speed has been changed again so that it matches their walking speed. Okay. Um, previously, it was just set that they had a swim speed of 30 feet. But again, now, if you're going to play a CF Monk or something like that that alters your speed, your, your swim speed increases as well, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, let's see here now. Uh, as part of Child of the Sea, you now also gra are granted resistance to cold damage. That's awesome. Which makes perfect no, sense, really. Because if you're a sea, yeah. if you're living on the bottom of the sea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, it, it absolutely makes that sense. Personally, I should, I, like, personally speaking, I'd also give them extended dark vision as part of Child of the Sea. Uh, I mean, they have dark vision anyway, just as being an elf. No, but I'd, yeah, I, 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 I get what I'd, you mean, though. I'd give them the like 90 feet dark vision that, like, I think it's the Drow have 90 feet dark vision. Drow have 120. 120, sorry, 120. Um, yeah. I know I'm thinking of the Gloomstalker that gets, if you have Gloomstalker Dark Vision, gets you get a bonus 30, yeah. yeah. I, I would give, just because, <clears throat> at least in my world anyway, the sea elves literally live on the seafloor, so it's dark as hell down there. Yeah, true. Down, uh, like that scene in Aquaman, where they go down and all the lurkers are like, there's just hundreds of them all around. It's such a pretty cool scene. Um, and at last, we have uh, Friend of the Sea, which previously let you communicate simple thoughts with um, with uh, beasts with innate swim speeds. Uh, now it specifies you can commit with beasts, uh, the creature type. Um, the trade also clarifies that although swim, uh, swimming beasts can understand your words, you cannot innately understand them in return. So you can give them ideas, but you can't respond. Yeah, back, which is, you've got it's, it, I mean, Aquaman to Lassie. Yeah, yeah, pretty <laughs> much, actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, actually, if, I, if you don't mind, I'll do Shadow Kai as well, just because I yeah. literally have it open right here. It's all the same thing. Uh, so Shadow Kai getting an update. Again, considered an L for any prerequisites. Uh, Fey Ancestry changes mentioned above. Trance mentioned above. And the Blessing of the Raven Queen, which as a bonus action, you can magically teleport up to 30 feet to an un unoccupied space you can see. Once you use this trait, you can't do it again until you finish a long rest. Starting at third level, you also gain resistance to all damage when you teleport using this trait. The resistance lasts until the start of your next turn. Uh, apparently, you, you take on some sort of ghostly translucent form while you do that, which is pretty metal, if you ask me. Um, now, you can do this uh, a number of times equal to... You can bonus action teleport 30 feet. You can basically misty step a number of times I, equal to your yeah. proficiency bonus. I That's would, unreal. I would totally just make my Shatter Kai attach you, Jiha. Do you know the way he'd always just explode into crows? Uh, is this, this is a uh, narrative, narrative reference. Like, is Sasuke's older brother. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. It just always just, just, when you do that thing, you just explode into into like a, sh a shower of crows. Just scatter, yeah. Yeah, it'd be sick. Um, 
Yeah, that's pretty, I mean, that's unreal. We, we came across someone else uh, last week who also got a bonus that they could teleport a whole lot. Um, Ellison. Yes, yes. And they, so, so now we have two types as if... <laughs> We were just complaining that like people play elves and dwarves too much, yeah. and like now maybe they'll play all these other races because they're getting bonuses. But no. two of the most, of the coolest elves get a bonus where they can teleport multiple times in a day yeah. as a bonus action. And they're like they're literally the coolest elves. Because you've got your like spooky raven queen elves that are all like, oh, I'm goth, and then you've got like your like eldrin who will be like, I have four different forms, and each of them gives my misty step a different ability. Oh, I can do that in shitload now as well. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah the, why, aren't the, people, like, why aren't people picking anything that isn't? Maybe if they stop letting all the elves teleport out a million times a day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> um, do you want to do shifter? Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you were done there. Apologies. Yeah, shifter. I laughed. Oh, yeah, there's, there's not much. The, the only real difference there mm. uh, is the general updates that go along yes. with the creature type fantasy and trance, and then the Raven Queen thing changing to proficiency time, proficiency bonus times per day. Yes. You so. saw. Uh, previously with the shifter um, they did have sub races uh, for the shifter so previously you would have had uh, beast hide long tooth swift stride and wild hunt uh, as options for your your shifter when you when you when you shifted um, so long tooth would have been like uh, fierce and aggressive they form deep odds or friends money long tooth shift they're like dogs basically um, and yeah. th- that would give you uh, an increase in your decks uh, strength and dex increases and gives you gives you intimidation um and also lets you like do bites and stuff swift stride more focused on like speed and stuff um wild hunt then is more of a tracker uh now that's all basically been collapsed down into this bestial instincts uh thing so you you now gain one skill proficiency of your choice from the fall sorry rather it has not been collapsed down into that it's been collapsed down into the base shifter as a as a race those three instead of being sub races you yes. now have one race that we talked about it last week as well one race that you just select abilities kind of as you go exactly so bestial instinct instincts you now gain one skill proficiency your choice in the following athletics acrobatics intimidation and survival um these were all skills that were in, originally granted by the original sub races so it actually has been collapsed down into this um shifting uh shift <laughs> shifting can now be used pb times per long rest uh when you choose this race you select one of four benefits for your Oh, four benefits for your transformation. Again, the same benefits grant, granted by the initial sub races. Uh, the 10 HP gained when transforming is now equal to twice your proficiency bonus instead of your level plus your constitution modifier. Again, I think that'll scale a lot nicer as the game goes on, give you a bit of a bit of profession. And long tooth, you can now attack with your fangs using the same bonus action used to shift, and the fangs are now considered an unarmed attack instead of a natural weapon. Previously, I'm pretty sure to attack with your fangs, it would have been a um. Yeah, it would have been. Uh, oh no! You can use your while shifted. You can use your elongated. Ah, it was a separate bonus action to, to make a bite when you were shifted into your long tooth form previously. So you would have had ah, to okay. bonus action. I'm shifting into long tooth, and then you could have had next your, turn. Next turn, then I bonus action and I bite with my long tooth form. Ah, okay. Whereas now you go, I'm shifting into long tooth, and as part of the shift, you uh you can make the bite attack, which is good. I like I I like stuff like that quite a lot when they kind of just um. Yeah, it seems like what they've really done there is really just like streamline everything and just kind of optimize it as a whole. Because, yeah, I can like trying to keep track of four different states if you're playing a shifter, when in reality you're probably just going to default to the one you like the best all the time. And in the rare moments where you need the other ones, you'll shift into those as a bonus action, you know, um, as happens yeah. with most stuff like that. But no, I, I like it. Um, I've never been massive about playing a shifter. But I, I think you could definitely do some really, really cool character concept. Like, I think a shifter would be a great uh, race to play if you wanted to pick, like, a mutant. If you wanted to play, like, a mutant character concept. I I have uh, a concept for them Ooh. in my homebrew world to take them, to, to, to supplant them from Eberron into, into my own homebrew setting. And that is that they are... Um, a, a group of people who would have been in the human empire they were humans um uh, i haven't sussed it all out but basically they were in, the, in there they were always kind of resistant to empire rule they kind of like they went along with it but they were it was a known thing that they were not very pro empire hmm. um and then the more that they kind of like resisted the more the empire kind of like clamps down on them harder and harder and they had this whole thing where oh well our in our culture in, in this area we also worship this fae who's been good to us so we we offer her you know uh, thanks and we're always that and they're like look you're either in our religion or you're not you can't be in our religion and also worshiping this fae um 
and then they clamped down even harder and then the guys these guys kind of like took a gift from this fae where she gave them kind of bestial forms um that they used to fight back and stuff like that um so they they were humans but they were humans that were granted a, a kind of bestial uh abilities to fight back against the like oppressors um I that's know. a loose idea i have at the moment for the moment anyway i i have an idea for them in my words but i cannot talk about it because it's a spoiler Oh, okay, cool, cool, no worries. Uh, uh, I'll take the tabaxi if you don't mind, because I, I, I DM one. I have to put up one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, so tabaxi. Uh, tabaxi are, a gr- first of all, I love tabaxi. Tabaxi are actually, I'm a real big fan of just them as a, as a race in general. But tabaxi size, um, you can now be medium or small, so if you want to live out the evil cat, like evil, like world-dominating cat dreams that you've had for your life, go for it, pinky in the brain style, tiny evil cat. Although they were mice. What do I think? I'm thinking of Cats and Dogs, that movie. Jesus. Where Toby oh, is it Mo- the one with their spies? Yeah, where Toby Maguire yeah. plays the, the hero dog. Yeah. I I was all, oh my God, that was Toby Maguire. Jeff Goldblum was in it as the dad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was only, I, I was watching Jesse Cox play uh, the Jurassic Park game with uh, Jeff Goldblum only, only the other day. And it's, by the way, which is the most wonderful gameplay. It's just it's so wholesome and so lovely because Jeff Goldblum is, is amazing. Mm. Um, but I, I was remembering like, what roles do I know from other than Jurassic Park? And I'm like, he was the scientist dad in Cats and Dogs. <laughs> Jesus, man. He's been in so many. The Fly. like The Fly. I, 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 I could have gone to a lot of other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Cats and Dogs is what I went to. Uh, so yeah, the tabaxi can now be medium or small. Your speed, your climbing speed is now equal to your walking speed. It's really good because you could always climb as a tabaxi because your claws um what was it previously here let's see uh feline a cat's I claws it was 30 was it because of your claws you have a climbing speed of 20 uh in addition to your oh, claws 20. Are, yeah yeah 20 um 20 was the previous one um previously it was 20 and it was one yeah it was 1d4 plus your strength mod it, that similar to the others has now been upgraded to 1d6 plus strength mod to be in line with your yeah. unarmed attack and obviously it's a I, I, it's still the same i believe it's a slashing weapon uh, i would imagine so yeah, slashing damage. I was just, just double checking there. Um, and that's pretty much all the changes for Tabaxi. You still have your feline agility where you can, if you want to not move on the next turn, you can double move this turn, um, which is really, really good. I uh, still have your dark vision. That's, a, that's an insanely good ability for like covering lots of ground really fast. That's insanely good. If you're a rogue, like, is it? A rogue or a monk, like, you're just stupid fast yeah. as a tabaxi. But I just think, like, rogue, like, because rogue, you can do it for even even more for free than the monk, because to dash as a bonus action as a monk, you have to burn a key point. But yeah, but I mean, like, you can just, you, you, but your innate speed would oh, be so sorry. high as yes, a monk after course. a while, Duh. you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and you're just you're just choosing to be twice as fast one one round, and then the next round you don't. Do you have, do you have to not move for yeah. a round to you, get that back? Yeah, it's basically like, this turn I'm yeah. using the movement from next turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty proud. Yeah, that's yeah. actually a great thinking of it. Uh, um, yeah. I'll do turtle if that's okay with you. Yes, because you DM for because a turtle. Because I, I, I DM for a turtle, and it's the same person who you play uh, if there's a tabaxi <laughs> in your game. Um, so, uh, turtle can now be medium or small. Uh, their bite, sorry, their claws. I say bite because Mike specifically wanted to be a snapping turtle. Because he's a turtle. snapping turtle, yes. Yeah. Um, is now a D6 plus strength and considered an uh, unarmed attack. Uh, survival and strength, uh, similar to the lizard folk above, mm-hmm. uh, is replaced with na- replaced with nature's intuition. You now gain one of the following skills, um, proficiencies, animal handling, nature, medicine, uh, perception, stealth, survival. Uh, while this list is the same as the lizard folks, you only get one proficiency as a turtle instead of two. Interesting. I Although I suppose that's the have... balance all the crazy stuff turtle already oh. has. Do you know what? Turtle and lizard folk have a lot of stuff in common, like natural armor and hold breath and stuff like that. Um, but the turtle's natural armor is just you get flat 17. And the turtle's uh, breath holding is a lot better too. It, it's literally four times longer. It's instead of 15 <laughs> minutes, it's an hour. It's an hour. True. And then instead of having 13 plus dex, it used to have a flat 17 armor class. So there's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of better stuff. Like it, it's, it's a short the one. Folk. Sorry? Self heal with the lizard folk though. True. Yeah, but you also get the shell defense thing with the turtle. That, yeah, I, I do feel like they're balanced. Wear, you can't wear armor with a turtle is the only thing. That's what I don't like. It, you can't wear armor. I don't like you can't wear armor. I, I like to think of it as you don't need to wear armor, Martin. Tell that to the crack and Wabu show. Uh, well, look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Connor's cut out. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh no, sorry. It, it, it is. It is the current. It is the current. Yeah, um, it is. It's not the zombie. It's not. It's not the other Wabu that I. Yeah. I, I zombie clone. It's not the zombie <laughs> clone with pieces of metal sticking out of him now. Yeah. Like uh, he just yeah. like Bolg in uh, the Hobbit. Um, oh, yeah. 
Do you want to do Triton? Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, so Triton, our our good old Aquaman race. Um, so Triton, your speed, your swimming speed is now equal to your walking speed, similar to other races. Again, for the reasons you've kind of already straight. For for the reason you you like this because Arita kind of. Um, yeah. Your swimming speed is now equal to your walk speed. Uh, control air and water. Uh, water wall has now been replaced with water walk, which is awesome. Really, really good. I, I will always value, I will always rate water walk because of a fight we had with a Hydra in, on a lake where water walk was cast on the whole party by the cleric and the Hydra couldn't drag us underwater because water walk prevents you from being dragged underwater. So literally That's we could just cool. stand over the Hydra stabbing the shit out of it, um, which is pretty awesome. That's a really good move, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Fair play to our cleric Jamie. He absolutely smashed it with that one. Um, <laughs> water wall replaced with water walk. This may be because wall of water is not in the PHB. Um, received the innate spell casting updates as well that are mentioned above. And yeah. I, sorry, I brought this up last week uh, about the Triton, right? Mm-hmm. So they're changing. If if the spell does not appear in the player's handbook, they do not include it. Um, in in any of the races because they feel like it, we should only be using the base spells for in its spellcasting abilities mm. that's fair enough here's the thing these races don't appear in the player's handbook and, and like specifically for the triton they have a little appendix that appears on the same page that tells you exactly what the spell does mm. because as far as i'm aware it's but now only... they appear in monsters of the multiverse together uh yeah it's just i don't know i like don't get me wrong i mean water walk is cool uh, I just think Wall of Water is also pretty interesting, like a pretty cool spell. And like, I don't know. I, I just feel like we don't have to limit ourselves to only player's handbook spells uh, when we're kind of designing these things. Because uh, particularly if, if we're going to like, I don't know, if, if, if the race in question does not appear in the base book, why do we need to limit ourselves to the base book? You know, I, but I, we can just put that little appendix there yeah, no, for that one spell. I, I guess I guess you're saying I, I guess they're just establishing this is the new base now. Monsters of the Multiverse yeah. is the new base, and this is why you're doing it. I'm guessing. Um, right. Uh, I. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we were not done with uh, Triton yet. So, lastly, emissary of the sea now specifies you can communicate with beasts, elementals, or monstrosities with a spit with a swimming speed. So, unlike the CF, which is limited only to beasts, um. The Triton can now uh, communicate with a shark, a water elemental, or an abolith. No, an abolith is an aberration. <laughs> I'm trying to think of monstrosities with swim speeds. Um, you you can literally that's pretty cool though. So previously, them, previously, yeah, pretty, previously it was beasts for them as well. Uh, simple if they, idea if is they breathe beasts. water. Yeah, simple idea is beasts can breathe water, and now it's beasts, elementals, or monstrosities that have a swimming speed. I do like that just that they can communicate with elementals. It kind of makes more sense. Triton always seemed like, in terms of the races that might appear in the sea, mm. it was like, sea elves would be like coastal in my mind. They can go underwater, but they're kind of coastal. Yeah. Then uh, Ganassi would be like more on or below the water. And then Triton are like, no, we live strictly below the water. They are the the mermen, essentially. They yes. are the, the aqua people. Yeah. Yeah, they are. So, so the, the fact that they would be way more in tune with the water and what's going on there makes total sense and, and, and i endorse that wholeheartedly yeah. um will i sign off then with uh the yuan t um yeah if you don't mind uh because i hate snakes <laughs> uh, oh that's true actually. Yeah, that works out really nicely um so uh previously the yuan t pure blood and um, they've, they've dropped the pure blood title uh and it said you're not just playing yuan yeah. t yeah you don't want to um, be sharing nomenclature with magical nazis uh yes <laughs> um so you can now be a size medium or small which i think makes perfect sense uh uh for you on team in particular because they can come in a lot of different sizes and forms and stuff like that mm-hmm. um your po- unfortunately your poison immunity is downgraded to only poison resistance oh no um uh, you have resistance to poison damage and an advantage on saving throws to avoid or end the poison condition mm-hmm. this is similar to the dwarves um these guys are still kind of like the most broken race in the game that no one plays uh i know yeah i, I had an idea for a character one but uh I, i'll get to that later um your magic resistance the trait now only grants advantage on uh saving throws against spells mm-hmm. uh, again similar to stuff we've seen before your innate spell casting is renamed so previously your innate spell casting was just called innate spell casting yeah. uh, it's now renamed to serpentine spell casting which i love um you receive the innate spellcasting updates mentioned above. With the exception, you cannot cast animal friendship um, from this trait using spell slots. Interesting. 
Interesting. Oh, Wait, have... I, I can see why. Because animal. Why? Because you because you can cast animal friendship an unlimited number of times. Oh, oh yes, you could do it, but, but you, you can only, only target, target snakes. snakes. Okay, yeah. so now you just can't cast it at all, but you still get poison spray as a cantrip, mm. and at third level you get suggestion, uh, which, which always like, reminds me very... of uh... Jungle Book. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Book, yeah. But he's like <laughs> slithering up and like hypnotizing people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Jesus, I hated him as a kid. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's cool though. I they're still really good. I mean, like, you still have points, so you still have uh, advantage on saving throws versus spells. Yeah, you resistant to poison and advantage on the uh, saving throws to resist or overcome the poison. You have dark vision. You have. Suggestion, which you can cast once, and then obviously you can cast multiple times if, if you are a spellcaster. You have poison spray just in your back pocket, mm -hmm. which, by the way, very underrated cantrip. Poison spray. I will never underrate poison spray after ever after the start of this campaign, where you just wrecked my character with a with a poison spray. It was one yeah. poison spray, and I was like, I need to leave. I can't fight anymore. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, like it's it's a great one for DMs because not a lot of. Uh, player races have resistance to it bar dwarves and you want tea and maybe one or two others I can't remember but like not most races don't have resistance but a lot of monsters do so it's mm. not actually a great one for players to pick but it is a great one for DMs to use against players um, it works case in point it case in point Mar Mar the barbarian who's resistant to bludgeoning piercing and slashing that's fine I'll just poison him um, he hit me for like I think it was like 3 or 4 d12 it was when 3d12 we, I yeah, think. But yeah when we were like level i want to say like level five or six and i was just like oh, wow. <laughs> where did my health go yeah um but yeah um so that's actually that's that's the last that's one then pretty, um this you, is sorry i'm gonna i'm gonna ask a question i was gonna ask a question but i think i already know the answer um i'm guessing the the um <laughs> Sorry. That's the doggo. That would be the doggo. Uh, I am guessing that the um, Ganassi changes are your favorite. Ooh, uh, definitely. I'm going to do a quick, uh, a quick speed through here. I mean, a lot. Uh, to be fair, a lot of the changes we're getting are just housekeeping stuff. They're kind of reorganizing how the how they're phrased. They're dropping sub races and just incorporating them to the same thing. A lot of it's just like bookkeeping that we're kind of mm -hmm. updating. Um, I love that orcs now have relentless endurance. That yes. never made sense to me that they didn't. Um, I like the updates to kobolds. I, li I like the fact that we're dropping sunlight sensitivity overall. Um, because, again, drow are awesome, but people don't play them because mm -hmm. of sunlight sensitivity. Kobolds are awesome, but people don't play them because of the same thing. Um, I like that Kenku don't have to... to... Actually, I, I like the updates to hobgoblins as well, actually. The, the way they have three different abilities they can choose from with those uses. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, I love that Goliaths can do with their stones endurance multiple times. Um, the the Ganassi updates are big for me because it's four different races, all of which I absolutely adore. I, I, and I think they're so flavorful and interesting. Um, so they're probably my favorite. Let's have a look here. There's a lot of really good stuff. Oh, I, I love the Dorgar. Dorgar mm. are great now. Dorgar are so amazing good. now. Uh, they might be the best dwarf now. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say that it probably are. There's some great updates all around. Mm. Asimar got some good stuff now as well. That They're probably my favorite update. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. 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 Asimar are pretty cool, though. Asimar, um, Eldrin, I really like. Kenku, I really like. Oh, El too. Eldrin and Shadow Kai, El the fact yeah. that they can all teleport multiple times. I mean, that, your your Dishonored uh, build, where you can dis like, disappear and blink all over the place, is now you know, pretty yeah. set. You're, you're ready to go with that one. Like, Eldrin were dope when you could... I thought it was sick because I could do it twice because I had Misty Step from Elgin and I had Misty Step as a Vengeance Paladin and I, I felt like yeah. I was teleporting all the time. <laughs> and, like, oh, I know it's be, it, it'll be yeah. utterly ridiculous like with that. Oh, it was so fun! Like you could literally like I used to always slave for like Batman when he just appears out of the shadow behind people or just like reforms behind him like Dracula and like just be able to be like boom 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 around the battlefield like that. So good. If you if you ever did like a Shadow Kai Shadow Monk, you could like Ooh. do some teleportations into shadows, but also if you're in the daylight, you can still teleport and stuff. That's oh, really good. Oh man, yeah, you've got me thinking now. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, overall, I, overall, I think there's some really good stuff here. There's one or two things that I think are like uh, they're kind of so-so, or they might be nerfed a little bit. Mm. But I don't think that any of the nerfs that we've seen um, are crippling to any of these things. In fact, overall, I think everyone got a buff i don't think there's anyone who got a, a definitive debuff no 
the the only one you could say is the UNT pure blood because they're no longer immune to poison. <laughs> yeah, and also the thing that they're not they're not uh, advantage on all yeah, magic saving them throws, and, just spells. Them and but even then, they're still are... really good. That just shows how, how broken they were before. Like because like re resistance and advantage on saves versus the poison, and now and advantage the on casting. yeah. And the innate spellcasting, like, they were, yeah, they were really good. They were so um, OP. <laughs> so OP, and still nobody played them. <laughs> I, uh, the idea I had for the yuan -T was, like, a, a, a flintlock rifle-wielding yuan -T, who was, like, an assassin rogue. So she, but, like, you know, like, uh, when you see some snipers, they do that thing where they're sitting, and they have their knee, and they rest their gun across their knee out like that on their, on their arm, and they can sit like that for ages because it's comfortable. I just picture her sitting on a roof with poison bullets. Um like miles away and and because she's an assassin because she's like a snake she's just like has no emotion about the character she's killing she's like we need you to kill someone she's like i kill this thing i get paid makes perfect logical sense so she just does the job um i thought she'd be a really cool character yeah no there's i, I think there are a lot of a lot of really cool concepts you could go in with uh yuanti but i will literally never touch them because i'm just not playing a snake person <laughs> which, which is fair <laughs> I just can't uh, I just couldn't because you'd have to centre everything in that character around being snakes I would be made massively uncomfortable with my own fucking character <laughs> <laughs> like it'd be really cool to do almost like taking a leaf out of Naruto's book again do you know the snake sages where they're do you know the sage monsters like Naruto is a toad becomes a toad sage there are snake sages that ninja can tra can train under in the um, Naruto world and I would right. love to do a thing with like Maybe like a, a U on T, do like a U on T, maybe do like send a dragon, but like reflavor it as like Path of the Serpent or something like that. And yeah, like totally. reflavor all the fire stuff to like poison and things like that. Um, And then like do do that kind of a character concept where you're like, uh, you're like a, you're a snake style monk and you're you're going yeah. out to seek to find this the sacred snake mountain to, to study under the snake sages and become like a snake sage. That would be sick. I would love to do that. I would Actually, definitely know some better names than this than than the snake monk who goes looking for the snake sages at Snake Mountain, but yes. <laughs> Fine, okay. Jesus, how okay. They're, so, they're called me... the sage the sages of the fang. Uh, and you're a a a uh snake monk, but you're going to Mount uh, the mountain is called Mount Orochi. Well there you go, yeah. Yeah. And the and the organization of the snake sages are called the eight heads. Oh, that's really good. Uh but Martin. Yes, Connor. <laughs> on on that note, that's all the time we have for today. Oh yeah, okay. awesome. No, like I'm really happy we went through this. Um and particularly that we did this in two parts. I think it's it's really good to go through all these and just kinda of have a chat about it and really break it down. I like I like We could these... have never done this in one episode. No, no, not at all. That was, ambi that was ambitious of us to think we could. Yeah, it would have been we would have really been doing a disservice to a lot of the cool stuff in here and the concepts and you also wouldn't have been able to make quite as many fun references. Um, exactly. so that was the thing. But I suppose with that we'll have to we'll we'll wrap up for today. Connor, where can people find you on the internet? People can find me on the internet uh, uh, at zero point Connor Z E R O P O I N T C O N O R one N very important. Um, or as always, you can find me here on the Mike Flares podcast every Friday at six p.m. Irish time on YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor Breaker, and Radio Republic. Right, where can people find you on the awesome. internet? Uh, if people want to find me on the internet, you can find me on Twitter at so sorry it's over, which should be in the bottom right hand corner of my screen here. And you can also find me on the Mike Flares uh, podcast network, which is at Mike Flares Pod, also in the furthest right hand corner of the screen. And that is pretty much about it for finding me on the internet, except for here every Friday, six PM Irish time for a brand new episode of the Mike Flares podcast. Hey, and with that, it'll be a goodbye from me, Slotcha, and a goodbye from Connor. Hello, folks. And we will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.